Hello, I'm Glenn Darling, and I'd like to talk to you about Open Horizon, the open source project that presents a single pane of glass for application management at extreme scale on both Kubernetes clusters and standalone Linux devices. First of all, it's edge native. Since 2015, it's been designed specifically for the edge, not for the cloud, not for IoT. And it works on any public cloud or in any private data center. And it even works air-gapped from the internet, completely disconnected from the internet in a factory, if you like. So it's not, uh, unlike many competitor solutions, a repurposed cloud or IoT solution. It's mostly decentralized, so there's a minimal central management hub, but fully autonomous agents independently manage each node. They make their own decisions, and they cannot be coerced into violating the policy that is uh, configured on those agents. Also, we have a truly zero-touch install process. All that a technician needs to do is uh, install the device in the, in the location wherever it's going to run, add power, connect it to the internet, and walk away. Installation of the software that's needed and any device-specific configuration for this specific node is all fully automated. Also, we work just fine in a disconnected environment, so our fully autonomous agents can continue to monitor and manage your applications even when they're disconnected from their management hub. These autonomous agents and the corresponding agreement bots or ag bots in our management hub, they take your stated intent in the form of what we call policy, and they make it real on all of your devices and clusters. And we support tens of thousands of clusters or tens of thousands of standalone Linux devices and even small machines like single core devices, uh, x86-64, ARM64, or even very, very small ARM32 devices as old as ARM32 v6. And uh, they require a very small amount of memory. Our agent itself only takes about 30 megabytes of RAM and, and uses a small fraction of a single core. And we present a single pane of glass for managing all of these containers, these tens of thousands of containers, uh, tens of thousands of machines with whatever number of containers on each. And you can use our CLI or our REST APIs. And if you're willing to pay a fee, there's a third party web UI from IBM as well. And Open Horizon is a Linux Foundation LF Edge project with open governance. Regular subgroup meetings and contributions are encouraged. So I'm an engineer, so I really prefer hands-on uh, examples instead of just chartware. So I'm going to use the template that's shown on the bottom of the page here. And I'm going to pop over to uh, hands-on demo. OK, so here we are on a Linux machine that is running a 5.4 kernel. And it's Ubuntu 18.04.4. And it also has some NVIDIA hardware installed because I'm going to, the example I'm going to use here is running on the NVIDIA GPU. So uh, we also have the NVIDIA container runtime installed, which enables the GPU to be accessed inside the container. And I also have some Open Horizon software. So the HZN CLI command is installed, but I also have the Horizon agent installed. So that means that not only can I do my development on this machine, but I can also treat this machine as an edge node and have the agent, the local agent, install software automatically. And this agent is connected to the Open Horizon management hub. Uh, the exchange is part of the management hub as well. And I can ask the local agent to tell me the status of this node. And currently, it's unconfigured, so it won't be participating in any software install right now. So I want to briefly show you the things that I'm going to install. The first one of these is this uh, container. That was developed by a colleague of mine here at IBM, Mike Collinger, and it's a face mask detection uh, example. So it's quite appropriate for these COVID times. And uh, I have a test image that I will pass to it that 
uh, shows the person wearing a face mask. And I have another test image that shows the person not wearing a face mask. And uh, so I'll pass those to the container once we get it started running. Now, the way that I like to deploy software onto Open Horizon is using this technique that I uh, have in my github.com, the mosquito, easy Open Horizon. I think this is the easiest way to deploy containers in Open Horizon. There's a step-by-step -step procedure here and some explanation in the readme, but I'm just going to clone this repo and uh, go ahead and use these pieces inside the repo. So let's go back over here. So let's see. Oh, I already have it cloned here. And uh, just delete the old one. So I can do that again. I'll clone the repo and CD into there. And there are a couple of files that we need to edit here, the make file, and we're going to also need to edit the service.json file. So let's edit the make file first. And there's six variables at the top of this file here. You need to edit some of them or all of them. So I'm going to create a software deployment pattern called pattern devnet. And I'm going to publish a piece of software that I'm going to call DevNet uh, Face Mask. And uh, I need to put in here the Docker registry information for the image that I am publishing. Uh, there it is, Mike Hollinger Vision Face Mask. And since that's just in the Docker uh, hub, I don't need any credentials. It's not a private registry. We do support private registries, but it's that's not a private registry, so I'll leave the container creds part blank. I'll save that. And we can edit the service.json. So this is the thing that describes to Open Horizon uh, what your container or containers look like and uh, what Docker run arguments they need. And um, this, um, my example that is in my repo uses port 80, but the Mike Hollinger container here uses port 5001. So I'm gonna set that up here. And that's all I need to do. Now I can go ahead and publish this service. Now to publish the service, I need to first create a cryptographic signing key because all of the software that you publish in Open Horizon has to be signed. Now I already have a key here, but it generates a new one for me. Um, and you can use this command or you can use your own key, but HCN key create, typically you put your X09 org and your X09 um, uh, contact, I forget that, what that's called, to create your X09, X509 certificate. And then we'll go ahead and make publish service. So we've done everything we need to do to publish this service locally here. There, now that service has been published, I am going to just check that it's there. You can look at it in more detail with these commands. And uh, we are going to publish a software deployment pattern that references that uh, particular service. And there's multiple different ways to uh, publish patterns and publish policies and publish services. And I won't go into detail on that, but there's lots of information on the internet about that. But now I've created this pattern called Pattern DevNet. And any machine that's connected to this management hub can now register for this uh, pattern called Pattern DevNet to get the software. And because I have the agent installed locally on this machine, I can go ahead and register this machine so it will pick up that piece of software. That'll just take a few seconds. And once it's registered, it will tell us you should check HCN agreement list. 
So that's what I have going over here in this window. It's running the HCN agreement list command once a second. And then the bottom window, I'm running the Docker PS command once a second. So over here, we see that uh, there's been an agreement created. So this means that an agreement bot, and specifically this particular agreement bot, made a proposal to the local agent to collaborate on software management. That was accepted by the local agent to evaluate several criteria, um, verifies the uh, AgBot, and then uh, once the agreement is finalized, then the software download will begin, and then the hash of the container and the cryptographic signature of the container and the cryptographic signature of the deployment information, the Docker run com uh, command arguments, are all validated and checked against the cryptographic signature. And then the container is run, and you can see that it's exposing port 5001 here. So let's make sure that it, the container is actually working and providing a useful service to us here. There's a quick check I can do. It exposes a REST API for a few different things here. The quick check gives us a success. So I know it's ready to do inferencing. So now I can send those images that I showed you earlier and see what it has to say. So that was the uh, image with the mask and it says mask okay and it has 99.9% uh, .9 confidence that that person's wearing a mask. And we can try the other one that doesn't have a mask. Pop that in here. And the result is a fail. So there's nobody with a mask that was discovered in that image. Okay, so that's all there is uh, for the hands-on portion. Let's go back to the slides. Okay, so if you wanted to use that yourself, the URL that's provided here will get you going. And uh, where's the Cisco connection? So currently, Open Horizon works on the Cisco devices that support the VM application type. And I provided a URL here. So you can click on that URL and see the platform support matrix and find out which devices support the VM application type, like the IC3000, for example. And uh, now I'd like to give you a quick summary of what Open Horizon is all about and give you some resources that you can use to get more information. So it's edge native. It was designed from the beginning for the edge, not for IoT, not for the cloud. It's designed with security first and is very robust under attack. It's mostly decentralized with very small scopes of authority for the components that are centralized, mostly the agents that run autonomously on the individual devices control the software deployment. It's truly a zero touch installation in the field. You just wire it up and walk away. The fully autonomous agents uh, are driven by the policies that you set, you specify your intent and the agents continue. If your devices are behind firewalls, no problem. The devices will always pull. Our agents reach out through the firewall to pull things. Nothing is ever pushed to the agents or to the individual nodes. And disconnected operation is also fine. The local agent will still work when uh, the network fails. So if you have a local Wi-Fi failure or some other local networking hardware failure, or there's some kind of external catastrophe that's blocked the internet, uh, it, our agent will continue to work. And so if you release some bad software on your device and maybe it even causes the network problem, it's no problem. Our agent will continue to try to get your software to restart and you can specify fallback policies so that it will, you know, try so many times in so much uh, span of time to reset your software. And if it doesn't work, then it'll fail back to a previous version or a previous version before that, as you wish. And we can support extreme scale, uh, tens of thousands per management hub. The um, IBM product officially exports 10,000 per management hub now, and the next release about a month from now will support 40,000 uh, per management hub. And it manages both Kubernetes clusters and standalone Linux devices, and it provides a single pane of glass for all of that. It's easy to use and has role-based interfaces, and if you're willing to pay a fee, you can have a web-based UI for it as well. And like the other LF Edge projects, Open Horizon is uh, open governance and welcomes contributions. 
So I have a few links here you can use to get more information about Open Horizon or about the um, IBM Edge Application Manager, which is based on Open Horizon. I, I work for IBM, so I have to put in a plug for our product. And uh, that's it. I uh, hope you're enjoying Cisco DevNet Create. If you would like more information, you can also reach out to me, Gwen Darling, at us.ibm.com.